Next in the tank is a product designed for women warriors of all kinds. Hi, Sharks. I'm Haley McLean Hill, United States Air Force veteran and CEO and founder of Torch Warrior Wear. Today, I am seeking $150,000 for 10% equity in my company. Whatever you're doing, I need to stop what you're doing and give not only uh, some super class, but some super thanks to Super Haley. Woo! Welcome, Haley. How are you doing today? Woo! I'm going to give it right back to you, Joe. Thank you oh, so thank much you. for having me. Oh, man, I have been such a huge fan, literally. I, oh, since, oh. <laughs> seriously. And I was like, so excited you even did your Shark Tank feedback on me. I was like, yes, this is like a freaking, like, I just hit the jackpot here. So thank you oh, for having me. I'm so glad I was able to. I know January was has been hit or miss. I got to go back and do those episodes. So shout out to those Shark Tank uh, entrepreneurs. But uh, I, I will get back to it. I, it it's been real, Jan January was a lot of travel, so I will get there. But yes. I'm so glad to hear that you were a fan of the channel prior to uh, to getting to go on Shark Tank. That's awesome. Yeah, Joe, I did my homework and you are the channel to go to. I was like, I need to see what all these other people are doing and I need to hear Joe's feedback because I'm not going to do what they did wrong. So <laughs> that was part of my my, my homework. Oh, that's so great. And that's part yeah. of the reason why we do this, right? It's, it's not just for people to, who are going on Shark Tank, but anybody that's going to be pitching uh, and have those questions asked and try to expand upon what can and can't be asked and what you know pitfalls you might have going on in the business. So uh, exactly. absolutely awesome to hear that you're taking advantage of it. That is 1000% why I'm doing this. Yes, uh, keep so, doing so. it, Joe. Keep doing it for us. We appreciate it. Thank you. you. Thank you. I, I must very much appreciate you. Thank you for being a part of the super community, Haley. It's it's of greatly course. appreciated. Of course. So um, before we get into how you were feeling walking down this uh, this hallway here, uh, I got I got to say, um, sorry, not sorry about the 49ers. Uh, you know, I I. I, I yeah I mean look I'm <laughs> silly uh it's it just is what it is but uh oh yeah. go birds I I get it my dad's an Eagles fan um I went to Penn State so I know oh yep. yeah that's awesome <laughs> so Miles Sanders was was with you guys for a little while yeah right? oh yeah 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 loved Miles yep. Penn Stater yeah I mean so I'm always a Penn Stater fan so whoever there's a Penn Stater I root for but I did cheer for the Niners for a year professionally so. I had some skin in the game and it was, it was tough. This was a tough one. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, look, it was one of the greatest Super Bowls. Uh, uh, like there's the, the Eagles win, uh, the, the Falcons, um, Brady comeback win. And then there's this in my, in my book, that's yeah. a lot. There's a lot of crappy Super Bowls. I mean, it just is what it is, but, but like True. this is top three, baby. That was, that was incredible. And I'm so happy for Andy yeah. Reid, which is, you know, again, the, the yeah. birds uh connection and then travis kelsey i guess but you know my daughter's <laughs> just like oh taylor swift's boyfriend yay let's go <laughs> i know it's so funny my friends uh, from torch like a couple of girls in the military community i'm asking like are you guys watching the game and they're like yeah no that guy i know tra you know taylor's dating him and maybe i'm like oh my gosh that's funny i i'm a little bit more of a football fan i know what's going on more so that's fun but <laughs> yeah what was the other team that you cheered for the Falcons. Oh, duh. okay, cool. Were you there? <laughs> yeah. Were you well? Uh, were you there for that Super Bowl? No, I was there when I was there when the the um the Super Bowl was in Atlanta, and I think it was the Rams versus the Patriots. Was that the Patriots or the Rams and Patriots? No, no, no. It was a. It was like 2018 to 2019, or 20. Okay. Uh, I tell you what. I will look it up while okay. you answer the question. Okay. <laughs> Talk about how you were feeling walking down this hallway here. Woo! If you could see it on my face, I was trying to squeeze every muscle in my body. <laughs> <laughs> I you, just you do look tense, right? <laughs> I was trying to squeeze every muscle because first of all, I was trying to simulate a march and obviously I'm not in the military anymore. So I was just kind of like, okay, let me give it a little bit of like performance. But then I just thought to myself, if I can squeeze and just like look really tight and when I stand on that rug and I'm just squeezing my body, then I'll just look really confident, <laughs> even though I'm feeling pretty nervous right now. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, so, you, you know, what's funny is I didn't even realize until watching it now uh, that they show your back and that your your shirt was uh, like cut open. I mean, obviously you took it off, um, yes. but I, it didn't it didn't register at the time like that it was just a bulky shirt. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that's the problem, right? That's the problem with normal uniforms. They can look this bad on women because our frames are so small. And that's the re whole reason why I even started my business. Cause I looked like that sometimes when I was in my uniform. <laughs> oh man. I, yeah. I mean, I, look, I'm a fan of bulky clothing, um, especially around the house. It's, it's sure a, it's a thing, but, but okay. Let me, but let me have, challenge you. Physique, so I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> Well, also, let me challenge you. When you go for a, um, a business presentation, right, you probably want to be wearing a form fitting suit. That's something like actually fits like fits you. So when I'm in the military, and I'm briefing generals, I'm going to the Pentagon, I'm going to speaking in front of 300 kids, because I'm a recruiter, and I look baggy and bulky, that doesn't really add to your credibility. So, you know, you want to wear something that actually fits you. I would agree. Uh, somebody should uh, tell Donald Trump that about his ties and, and suits. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. And you were right. Uh, it was uh, Super Bowl 53 with was that 53 l3 yeah l3 um okay. and it was the patriots and rams 13 to 3 ding, ding, uh, ding. in 2019 yes in 2019 I get the <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's what, i was well i saw the mercedes-benz stadium and i immediately was like oh that's wrong that because should be the super new orleans yeah right, it's but the same they're both it's, mercedes they're yes. both mercedes it's it's yes it's weird they're both the mercedes um but it's just like the drop top Benz. I don't. I it's, think the both... it's the Caesar Superdome now. I wonder when it changed names. Okay. Uh, 2021, it changed out to the okay. Caesar Superdome. So, yeah, they were both the Mercedes for a little while. I went to a uh, game to go see the, the Saints. Yeah. But, yeah. Look uh, at us knowing all yeah, this football that, stuff. That, there you go. <laughs> I told you guys. <laughs> um, so, uh, well, I, I got to say, um, I had never taken a, a tour of a, of, a, of a football stadium before. Uh, we were recently at the uh, Cowboys Stadium, boo. Uh, <laughs> but it was an incredible facility, and we got to go through uh, both the, the players' um, uh, locker, locker room rooms. as well as the, the cheerleaders' locker Cheers. room. And uh, I, I got, I almost startled myself because when I was, I was, I think I was looking down at my camera because I was walking, like holding my camera, walking into the room, and I didn't re like I thought, I thought somebody was walking into me because there was a mirror right when you walk in, and the whole <laughs> wall is mirrors, and then you walk in, and then it's just all mirrors everywhere. I got to do a video about that. Um, Alex you from should. from Denzo was asking, he's like, so you're gonna do a video about this? And I was like, I, ah, you know, when I get time, I'll get around to it. But it was a really cool experience. Um, and, yes. and all that, uh, catching touchdown passes and, um, and some funny shenanigans with the star in the, oh. the yeah, well, um, I, I'll show you, I'll show you a picture afterwards. I don't know if I'm going to put the picture yeah. out there, but I'll show you the picture afterwards. Um, <laughs> Please show me. A, yes. Uh, there's actually two photos. Um, well, yeah, I've been there. I, you know, I've been there and I almost moved to Dallas to try out for the Cowboys cheerleading team because they're, you know, like the best most talent like they're apparently the, best, the world's best, paid, best paid ones from what i've heard but i don't know what that that justifies as i don't know if that's true or not i heard them and i heard the cowboys in miami pay maybe the highest or something like that but i, I think it hmm. depends right because every team is different and if you do more appearances like when i was with the falcons i got to do super bowl appearances which you're they're paying you like three grand an hour you know just to show up places but if you're not with the super bowl whatever <laughs> Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, right. Yes. Like that's that's not that's not nothing. I mean, that's not nothing at all. Just to show up, I'm like, yeah. Hey. But um, I decided not to move to Dallas because the business started taking off, and I was like, I gotta be here in California, and I just decided to stay. But I did that tour, and it was incredible, amazing. It, it it was the food was really good. Uh, everybody was was kind of razzing me because I was wearing a, an Eagles hoodie uh, there. Uh, I was the only one. So you I meant to do that. You did that oh, on yeah. purpose. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it would <laughs> be starter. not fitting. It would not be fitting if if, if I didn't. Right. Uh, yeah. But they were all super accommodating. That's what funny. The guy that was in the that was in the um the players' locker room was actually from Scranton, Pennsylvania. And he had just moved there like a year earlier and he got a gig there and at the Ranger Stadium, like just doing tours and I don't know, ushering or whatever. And yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, I've been a Cowboys fan since, uh, you know, since I was born. I'm like, 
and you lived in Scranton all your life? He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But at least, you, but at least you live here now, right? right. You know, uh, good. You know, and, and I mean, how many of those you know, are, uh, Cowboys fans never even been to Texas at all? And I've, I may have been, I've been to Texas quite a few times over True. the years, but, uh, but. <laughs> True. So okay, so you're you're walking down, you're you're feeling tense uh, as you're walking down the uh, the I always want to say aisle, the the hallway here, and you're standing in front of the sharks. Um, I, talk about what what was um your what what shark were you you most wanting to have you know to to ha to get a deal with when you uh, were preparing to be on Shark Tank? Yeah, one hundred percent. I was looking at Emma. Um, with her background in, you know, with Skims and Good American, I thought it would be an awesome fit. And nobody else really had retail experience there. Damon wasn't there. So I thought she would um, be the most interested. Yeah. And I thought, you know, to me, I would think that that would make the most sense. Right. And you wouldn't know that she's was going to be on there till what, like two, three weeks ahead of time. Right. So exactly. that's like, whoa, like, hey, that's. Oh, that's I was awesome. fangirling so hard. I mean, she's still amazing. I love her. I think what she's doing is incredible. So I was just happy to be in the room, but I was definitely like zoned, zoomed in on her. I was like, we'd be the best partnership ever. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so with that said, I mean, it had to be kind of crushing that she did not get the same vibes, vision um, that you were hoping, you know, for uh, and preparing for. Um, are you worried that she might be, you know, able to encroach on your space? knowing that she's already in the space as it is well in the more general space well you know joe i think at the end of the day um all i can do is you know with anything with businesses it's, it's a risk with anything right i think my experience and that's kind of what i was trying to share with her i was like my experience and the military community is so tight-knit and we we really are like veterans supporting veterans i feel that and that's why i'm so grateful to be a veteran and i think that is like opens a lot of doors in the military community so i was like you know utilize me as a as a tool and as somebody who can open doors that um will be will be easier and so she was open to it even you know in the episode she kind of said like you know i love this i love what you're doing but i think um my we're just in different like different paths right now so i'm not too worried about you know her trying to step on my toes anything i think she's a girl's girl and is awesome but um who knows i mean we'll see what the future holds i'm always open to collaboration as we continue to grow i'm like maybe she'll see we're growing and want to do a collaboration in the future yeah i mean i i mean especially now um that you were able to land a deal with lori uh which congrat you know ding ding congratulations and, and by the way great i'm gonna bring the bell out this for that one because that was a great answer uh to not see it as such a you know us versus them uh type of mentality um i no. think is because i mean there's 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 a, you know they say a butt for every seat uh and there's different reasons to support different uh, entrepreneurs and and she also specifically said that you know your pricing was right where it's supposed to be so it's not yeah. like you know if you were there um i mean damon has said this in, in the past the other entrepreneurs like yeah no this isn't it, something something's not adding up here right or it's too expensive or it's too cheap right. um and and she didn't she gave you that that blessing of uh you, you're you're on the right you know you're doing the right things and you're right on the right path yes exactly and like i said I think like as a woman and um, with what she's building, I admire her so much. And I almost look at it as like she I think we can cheer each other on from afar. And like I said, in the future, I would love to be able to collaborate and um, do something special. So I have hope always. I love it. Uh, when <laughs> when you got uh, a deal or started to to get an offer from Lori, um you you went and countered what were you prepared to give that much percentage up going into it so my ceiling was 30 percent, and so i really felt like i was winning when she said 25 but i had some shark team coaching and i watched your episodes and your feedback and i countered and i was just like i'm just gonna go for it and she was gracious enough to come down to 22.5 i was like let's do it i'm already winning you know at 25 so let's go for it <laughs> That well, so with that said, how did you go about coming up with your initial uh, offer valuation? Well, you know, Joe, <clears throat> we're still very young, new. We, I've only been in business since June of 2021. 
so a lot of my valuation was around like our growth that we've seen in the last two years, but then also just the um, the military tactical uniform space. And so I went in also with thinking just as um, the connections in the network that I have also as a veteran and the potential agreement with AFES and all that stuff. So I went in with um, a pretty conservative evaluation, I think. I think I probably was worth more and I definitely do Feel like I'm worth more but I was also my whole idea was just like going in there and building a partnership like it really wasn't about the cash it was more about um, having that network and that opportunity to partner with a shark yeah and I, th- I think that's the right the right way to go about doing it right because you're not um something you know you don't have something that's patentable so it's relationships it's the the time and effort you put in to get those materials and put them together put the brand together but at the end of the day like you could start another brand like and and start it up again because it's not a patentable thing so i you know i think that makes a lot of sense that if you get that foot in the door and you get that that shark it's way more valuable than just saying well this is my you know um flag in the you know flag stake staked into the ground like i'm not budging on this and yeah you know, potentially no. having you know a lost opportunity to make uh have a partner or even a friend out of the situation exactly relationships are always better than money that's how i feel always ding, ding. Uh, <laughs> i mean that's all what businesses really are right like it's yes. it's all it's a group of relationships that you build um both in your own network and out you know outside of that uh your actual business, but, um, you know, whether it's exactly. clients or, or vendors, manufacturers and, and, and the like. Exactly. Um, so how did you get uh, connected with Shark Tank? Did they reach out to you or did you um, apply? I applied online. Really? Okay. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That, nope. <laughs> did you, and you applied just one time or was it a multiple attempt? So I did apply um, the year before and I was moving through the process and then I did have a kind of private investor situation that was like, don't go on because we have some other opportunities for you. So I ended up actually turning it down and then that situation fell through. And the next year I was like, you know what, I think I'm going to go for it again. They said, okay, are you sure? And I was like, yes, I'm sure this time. I don't have anybody else in my ear. I've kind of learned that lesson and I'm going to go for it. So it was two years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, you know, and, and thinking about it, um, I'm surprised that they put you in this season or even mono suit because you're both body suits. You know, yeah. To some degree. Um, right. And, and that's, it seems like I, I could see where a producer would be like, that's, too too much all in one season let's get it in a you know next year or something to that effect sure you know i think because it's this military aspect and i don't know if mm. i did a great enough job maybe sharing like yes the bodysuit is our product that's our hero product right now that is the most revolutionary you know product in the military space right now that's like dedicated towards women but we're gonna be a brand like it's like this is a clothing brand this is like lululemon or figs or nike like this is what we're trying to capture the military space and hit the entire military uniform for women in every stage of their career mm, yeah i i think that that uh i mean i, I did in the episode i don't remember did you and i just rewatched it um but did you say how many women are in the military space like how many women are in those spaces right so if we want to kind of think about the active duty military it's roughly around 14 percent of the entire military so around like 1.3 million women but when you think about reserve guard cadets from like west point air force academy coast guard academy and then you go um, international, which we have already started to tackle, it's kind of harder to gauge, but it's probably going to land around like, I don't know, three to five million ish, maybe around it, probably more, but I'm still doing my research on that. But um, yeah. Uh, no, I think, I mean, I think that's great. Like you get, you know, you get your foot in the door in their, in the, of the mind, right. Of uh, the mind share with yeah. that product that they know and love and trust and and feel confident in you know, you make shoes, you make socks, you make all the other things, bras, whatever they, they come along with it. And, yes. you know, all of a sudden it starts just, you know, it starts compounding itself on every um, cart trans, you know, transaction. 
Exactly. And that's what I'm so excited for, just developing the entire line. Have you heard of the brand Fitz, Joe? Uh, I want to say I've heard of it. I don't think I've ever actually looked into it. Okay, you have to check them out. They're like revamping the scrubs um, healthcare community. So they're making scrubs more comfortable for doctors and nurses. And it's like athleisure material almost for them, which makes sense. Like they're usually, you know, the scrubs are horrible material. So um, that's kind of the goal that I feel like. And I would, again, ding, ding, ding here. Figs, if you're watching, another collaboration opportunity. Yes, look at them. So interesting. Is it yeah. really? So is it? Is it just more? Fit? Is that what I'm? Is that what I'm seeing here? Yes, the material is, is superior. The fit is superior. I mean, if you go into a hospital, and you're gonna see figs everywhere now. They're everywhere. So they're doing amazing. Huh. They're marketing. They're the way they support their community. It is exceptional, and it's definitely a brand I look up to. So where did where, do you, do, where did the word figs come from? Is that like figures, like as in like your Ooh. Like your or is it a last name or fig plants tree or fig trees oh okay Figures? great question I don't, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know that answer but um a side note if you saw kind of in the middle of their screen they had a relationship and a partnership with new balance and they made a shoe um mm. for the healthcare community and that is something that i feel like would be awesome another ding ding maybe like a boot collaboration military co collaboration with nike or hoka or under armor or something like that um to give another specific um you know product i think that'd be pretty cool i think torch is going to be you know the opportunity the avenue for these other brands to connect with the military community that's kind of my goal yeah yeah i i mean i think that um is there is there any other businesses that are doing that in the military sector you know i really think we're filling a huge white space for direct to consumer there's definitely some other brands that create obviously military uniforms um there's a big brand called massif they're they do amazing dry fire uh, other base layers and stuff like that but a lot of them go more um, direct to the government so they're selling b2b but the brand building with the actual direct consumer space is there's really nobody targeting or, you know, getting on TikTok and making those fun, you know, connecting with this new generation. And they're coming, man. I mean, Gen mm. Z is here to stay. And if you haven't seen, probably not, sorry, but the military community is going through a lot of um, changes with the regulations because of recruiting efforts. So, you know, you can have more tattoos than you used to be able to have. You are allowed to um, have your hair a, certain, a different length. Women used to only be able to have it in buns. Now they can have it like shoulder length. So there's just a lot mm. of changes to um, help make it more comfortable and also help with the recruiting efforts, which is pretty cool. So I, 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 I when you talk about recruiting, I did watch at least one video talking about a female who was doing better at recruiting male um, recruits than than like all the the money they're spending on ads and co like you know concert uh, stuff and like booths and things of that nature. Um, yeah. And I, what's was funny though was the video pointed out that like she's breaking a lot of the rules. <laughs> um along the way of what you're really supposed to be allowed to like in active duty be able to film or whatever and mm. yeah, i mean her her response to that was like i'm recruiting more people than they are so they're not going to stop me oh <laughs> yeah i don't remember Spicy. the name um i don't yeah. recall i'd have to go through my um youtube watch history to like find the person that that uh did the video talking about this this topic which i just thought sure. was interesting you know i i'm always looking for different documentaries different angles different stories to, to like take in and and just understand um the world around me a little bit better uh yeah. but yeah i didn't i didn't know if you had anything to add to that um create the, the craziness of I know it's a spicy Talk. topic, you know, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a little spicy, Joe, but here's the thing. I think there's two ways to go about, you know, anything, right? It's the right way. And then you have like the creative way. And so I just think that you can get creative. And I think that's what we're trying to do with torch where it's like showing the military in a different light that does bring in people, but it's not, you know, it, it maybe it's towing the line of, um, you know, this is the new, this is the future. This is the new way the military is going to work. I think 
sh- showcasing and maybe the propaganda, right? Okay, here's an example. Uh, Masters of the Skies. Have you seen that new Apple TV? Oops, <laughs> that new mm, Apple TV. I've heard of it, yeah. Oh, okay. No, is that what that, like, I don't. I don't, I don't know why it does that. I, I don't know. I've had that happen in other apps too. And I, I don't know. <laughs> It's a, I know, Zoom's not super consistent. <laughs> no, um, but so or Band of Brothers. Have you ever watched that show? I haven't. Uh, okay. I've, I've been mean to. I just not a lot of TV shows I've watched. Um, nonfiction, or I'm sorry, fiction. I, I watch more nonfiction stuff, documentaries. I'll watch movies, but TV shows not. not I, yeah. I want to watch Band of Brothers because I, I, like a lot. The problem with TV shows is um, they don't know how long they're going to actually be. Right. Mm. So like our well, hour long TV shows are usually an hour because they're trying to fill commercials and they just fill it with a bunch of crap to get you to the end. And then <laughs> they don't know how like they have arcs, right? But they don't really know like where is it going? Where where are we all headed to? Right. Like and, and you see yeah. best with like um what was the island one that, that everybody um lost? You know, that was oh. like and everybody's like, Oh, well, the tar- the ending was terrible. And it's like, so you wasted or you spent all of these hours to get to an ending that was unsatisfactory and like so i'd rather watch a movie that like in an hour and a half i know if it's a great movie or a bad movie not 10 (laughs) hours for six seasons uh you know 60 hours of my life to be like wow well that was really um unfulfilling and disappointing um and 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 so they so it's like okay so i like beginning middles and ends is is the short of it right and and tv shows don't usually give you that um, there's a few, but not many that I've, you know, my wife is more into that. <laughs> I understand. I understand. You like to use your time more efficiently and you want to, you want to, yes, I know. <laughs> I get it. I think the band it's of brothers, gratification. I, I totally understand that. I think you would enjoy them, the band of brothers and the masters, masters of the skies, because you know that it's about like limited war. series. The, it's limited series. Exactly. So it's like, you know, it's, it's good. But what I want to say is, is that Sometimes those shows can be, you know, really amped up on, oh, you go to war, you come back, you kiss the beautiful woman and, you know, kind of glamifying, right, the of war and what it's like to be in the military. But people will watch that and be like, I want to join the military because it's so cool. And, you know, I think with anything, it's reality. Like there's going to be pros and cons to anything. And so that girl who's kind of showcasing the military in a different light, I think everybody just has to be realistic that, um, it's not always going to be that way in the military. You just have to be smart enough to decide and know that everything comes with its pros and cons. And I will just have to say though, being part of the military and what we do with torch shows we want to highlight the, the success and the opportunities that you have in the military too, whether, whether that's to stay in for 20 years to become a general, whether that's to get out and be an entrepreneur, whether that's to go in and, you know, be able to have a community. There's just so many positive things that we like to showcase in the military. And um, it's just all about how you play the game. Yeah. Well, I, I, absolutely. I found the video, so I'll, I'll send you over the video. So I'd, I'd love to get your, uh, your, I mean, the video has, uh, 533,000, uh, views on it currently. Um, oh boy. It, the, the title is the army is getting desperate. Um, uh, so yeah, so, 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 I'm just real. I'll, I'll send it to you afterwards. Get, get your, uh, get your, your input on that. Um, please. but yeah, so going, back to shark tank um how did you balance like at the time um what were all the things that you had going on and how did you balance that with your life and the business as well as well as preparing for shark tank well um as you know life of an entrepreneur is especially in the beginning the first three three to five years it's figuring it out as you go, I would say. Um, I take every every day as a learning experience, whether that is trying to manage my time a little bit better or that's trying to um, you know, do outreach. I think my main focus in this, you know, this time was just outreach and getting the brand out there. So social media marketing has been huge for us, attending conferences. So while I was attending conferences, I would like you know, go into the back of the conference and do like my uh, pitch with the producers and be like, they're like, where are you? I'm like, oh, I'm in Virginia. I like, got a conference. And they're like, okay, you know, just kind of keep moving. You just got to keep moving your business um, along. And again, it was just like making sure inventory is ready and good to go. Um, as a product-based business, you just, and you know, you don't know what the, the influx is going to be. So it was just a lot of planning and projections with my team and a lot of um, making sure that our social media and our Instagram looked the part. 
Yeah, I mean it's it's I mean it's definitely a lot and being at uh conference because I know you're also a speaker, right? And uh yeah. and, and a coach and um I mean you're you're doing a lot of a whole lot of things there, which is absolutely <laughs> awesome to see. But I guess I wouldn't expect much less from somebody who is in the military while also wanting to run a business and doing uh, uh cheerleading as well. How much crossover was there with between um cheerleading and being in the military and the business. Like, <laughs> so like, I know it, it wasn't as crazy as you think, Joe, which is, which I think a lot of people think cheerleading is a full-time job. <clears throat> but when I was in California, because I did cheer with the Falcons for a year, but I hadn't started my business until I was, I moved here to California. I had practice on Saturdays for six hours. So that was just like, we got it all in there. And then games on Sundays or Monday nights, my work, you know, I worked from seven to four on the weekdays. And then I would pretty much work on my business at night, um, all at night. And then that's kind of how I was doing the dang thing. Uh, well, that that is that is still a lot. I mean, look, six hours of practice <laughs> uh, is nothing to sneeze at. But but I would I would argue that it's it's a it really is a 24 seven job because like, yeah, you know, you got to have that willpower to not be in the cookies and the the ice creams and the all the things that are not going to help you be, you know, fit to do the things that you do while cheerleading. Absolutely. Well, same thing for if I'm eating a bunch of cookies, how can I focus on building my business if I'm just sleeping on the couch? <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, that's true. That's true. Uh, you no need bad. some protein and veggies for your brain, you know, I need my brain <laughs> functioning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. I mean, so much of gut health is uh, just more and more emerging as a thing that we should have probably had already figured out long ago. Um, <laughs> I know. I think some yeah. in some ways I think we had like I mean like the was it the Romans or the Greeks with their the the olive oil and the you know the the Mediterranean diet mm -hmm. thing like in some ways they figured figured things out but uh you yes. know well you know I'm from Stroudsburg Pennsylvania um small you know small little town in Poconos yep. and I when I moved to California I just feel like my eyes were opened and obviously the weather's better so you can be outside more and then I'm dating like this total Santa Cruz guy and he's like oh you know uh, you know our organic and and just you know we're gonna go work out we're gonna be on the beach today and I'm just like oh yeah it's just like it's just a different vibe over here I'm like yeah I'm never I'm never leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I, I assume he's a surfer as well. He's not no? actually. Oh. We we have surfed, but he was more of a basketball player, so he was kind of an outlier here. And um, that's how I feel like we both get along because we we're both kind of outliers in our area. I wasn't very much of a Poconos girl, and he wasn't very much of like a Santa Cruz guy. So kind of <laughs> East Coast, West Coast. Yeah, love him. Shout out Daniel. Shout out babe. <laughs> <laughs> so um so uh were you, were you i assume you were a big fan of shark tank prior to knowing that you were going to get to go on the show i really wasn't joe um really? not that i di i didn't like it i just wasn't into business i was going into the military i was a cheerleader dancer growing up i never really grew up with entrepreneurs in my life but athletes mm. um so when i went to penn state i was so focused on getting my degree i majored in math because the military made me so i was very preoccupied with that i did um minor in economics but we never watched like a shark tank show or anything like that but um when i graduated and went to atlanta i that's when i started kind of seeing more entrepreneurs i feel like and then when i moved to california that's when I realized I was like, oh, there's like a whole community out here. And then I just started watching the show then. So it was like maybe a year before I went on the show, I started really watching it. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it's, I guess if, if that wasn't your world or your, you know, something that was on your mind, it, it wouldn't be something that you, you would be into, um, or, or like going out of your way to watch, no. um, which I mean, I, yeah. So that's, I mean, it's awesome that you caught the bug though. Congratulations. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Uh, it's, I'm here. <laughs> you get to make such a big, you know, I mean, that's the thing I love about businesses is, is the impact that we get to make in our communities and to, um, the people that we employ, uh, you know, and the team that we build around us and then the businesses that we interact with and those employees. And it really amplifies our, our, um, effect in the world, you know, our reach in the world, uh, yes. to, to impact change. I mean, there's so many other ways to do it, right? There's movements and things like that, that we can be a part of, but, um, but business in within the matrix in which we've set up called 
you know, capitalism and, and all that, uh, that is one of the best ways to, to do it is to, to not just play a part, but to play uh, a role uh, yes. in, inside of that, that, uh, yes. that system. For you better are or so worse. Right. I For mean, I mean, it's got, capitalism has its ups and downs. I, you know, I'm, it's pros not, and cons. It's like we not, said, pros and cons. <laughs> you know, pros and cons. But if there's there's good people out there, and we all have good hearts, and that's why I try to always act with integrity, and you know, this all this stuff. Be authentic. Have an authentic business. Act with integrity, and you'll feel like you're doing the right thing. I mean, we just decided to launch a scholarship for cadets, female cadets that are interested in starting their own businesses. And um, we're, I'm actually going to fly to Virginia to the Virginia Women's Institute of Leadership. They're like the only female only um, military cadet corps. And we're going to launch a $2,500 scholarship um, to help a cadet who is interested in starting her own business. So I never thought I'd be able to do something like that. But like you said, the impact there um, and just the reach. Now the girls are excited and can help another girl, you know, build her dreams. So I'm excited. That is phenomenal. I'm so I'm so yeah. glad to hear that. I hope that you find uh, the right person that that is going to help fulfill that uh, this time and then the next time and the next time and continue to grow it as you know torch grows and um, the reach grows of maybe being able to pull in more more people to help with that fund uh, yeah. and grow it that way. I hope so. That yes. that is awesome. Um, you. You're welcome. So did your did your deal close yet with Lori? Or are you still in? Um, words are eluding me due uh, diligence due diligence that's it correct yes, yes. <laughs> i know <words>. we are <laughs> yes <laughs> oh, okay. due diligence yes oh okay all right i mean that's not uh not that not nothing i mean that happens all the time right some people right. close before the show airs some people close right after the show airs and some people take sometimes weeks and months after that because of how complicated it can be right Exactly. And yep, we're here still trucking along. I think just like anybody and anybody listening, it's like, regardless if it goes through or not, you keep moving forward and we push and we keep building our relationships. So yeah, just, I mean, just the blessing of Lori has just been unbelievable. So, you know, what more can you ask for? Yeah, no, that is, that is uh, absolutely awesome. And, and I don't think she has invested in many um, clothing line companies like no at, at all i don't i don't think i could be wrong but i'm not i'm not the sort of tech historian uh just going <laughs> by what i've seen yeah no i don't think so i think we're definitely she and she did let me know that she's just like you know i don't really do retail but um i she really liked my story and um, what i stood for with the military she's a big um, support of the military and um that's you know just it's awesome to have that yeah no she definitely is um, of the, the she wears that uh medallion for police i believe um or fire because i think she has like a brother or something uh it's a firefighter police officer one of one of the emergency services uh at, at the very least and i think maybe i've seen her wear mil a military uh thing at, at one time or another but um cool so once uh, once you got back, how did you go about preparing your business to to potentially air on Shark Tank? What what did you do to get it ready? Website, uh, stock, you know, increase. What what did you? What were you doing? Yes, um, marketing effort. So it was the lead up. We tried to build a lot of excitement with our community. So it was like you know, the month before we were having um, a countdown, we were doing emails, text marketing, just can't look out for us. We did a lot of operation logistics and systems putting in place. So customer support, um, making sure that our inventory, we took pre-orders because we just, we, we were blindsided. I actually thought that we were going to be airing way later in the season, like towards May. So we didn't put in a big influx of orders. So we just decided to do pre-orders and um, maybe that deterred a couple people, but we did what we thought we could handle. So we just, as soon as the order started coming in, we started to use that cash to then um, put in for new orders. And then for um, the finance, the finance side of things and this preparation, we just wanted to make sure that our bookkeepers were good to go. All of our um, apps were firing and uh, making sure that everything was, the data was being collected from the visitors so we could retarget and do the ad side of stuff afterwards. Um, and then just talking with my team and saying, hey, look, like this is going to get fun and crazy. So we need more communication, not less. And um, just hyping everybody up, getting everybody on the same page. 
Yeah, you know, I I feel like with such a um niche product and a and a niche target audience, like I I feel like you could you could get away with doing the pre order route, right? Versus having like every everything has to be there and has to ship out by like Sunday night or Monday, you know, Monday morning. <laughs> like where everything's yeah. everything's out by Monday morning. Um, you are right, Joe, and. We- I want to do a huge shout out to all of the women in the torch community, my torch team, everybody, every customer who has waited with us. I mean, we've had people who have waited because we've done pre-orders when we first launched too. We've had people who've waited like three to four months as I was going through like product development and we only lost like maybe three or four customers. And this, this is why I'm saying like, the military, we look out for each other and the product is unique and new. People are like, Oh, I just gotta try it. You know? So Thank you for everyone being so patient. And now that we have this influx in cash, I'm excited to move away from pre-orders. That is, that is, uh, that is powerful. And, and, you know, again, like because of the target, you, you have your target, right. Your, um, audience, you, you have that opportunity to have that, um, connection with that audience. That's going to, I mean, three to six months is a long time. <laughs> and, and if you were offering something that was maybe a little more generic that a lot of people would probably be like, yeah, it's cool, but I'm not, I'm, I'm going to move off of it. Right. I'm not yeah. waiting around, uh, forever. So I, I think that is, uh, I think that was wise to not necessarily put yourself in deep debt, uh, for that. Per- yeah. uh, I mean, maybe you are in more debt than that, but, but at least <laughs> for that purpose, just for inventory purposes, um, getting on that treadmill is not, um, really a, a great way to to build it right exactly and you never know right because we were doing bulk orders we had some bases reaching out to us and saying we want 100 body suits and that's happened twice that's now awesome. so yeah so now we're just preparing for that too because it's not just buying inventory for direct consumer now it's for bulk orders too so how do you kind of manage that and that's just time and and waiting and um, allowing everybody to be patient with us because we are a small growing business and everyone's been really awesome Oh, that is, that is awesome to hear. Um, so yeah. did you, did you have a watch party? I did. I did. And we had s- several watch parties again, shout out to the, my military community. We had one at the air force Academy. We had one at West point. We had one in Virginia. Um, I had one, my dad over my dad and my family had some at home and I had a big one here in California. So it was awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Were you like, uh, did you, did you do anything like as far as like video to be able to be, to see you? Like I had them just record it and then they sent me after, you know, oh, and okay. it's funny because the day of, I actually told everybody, all the cadets who decided to do a watch party, I'd send them free pizza. So I had all of them pick up their pizzas and, <laughs> and send me videos of them eating their pizza and everything. So it was, it was cool. They had a good time. <laughs> that is so great. Um, Who doesn't love pizza? Come yeah, on, pizza, I, pizza and Shark Tank. Well, there you I go. don't know. Is there any good pizza out there though where you're at? That's my question. I did. My watch party was at a sushi restaurant, so that <laughs> makes more sense. <laughs> well, I think there's um, so you know, sushi on pizza. I think, can't you? I mean, is that what like pineapple and pizza basically? It's like the vegetarian uh, sushi. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> um, how, so, uh, I know you talked about the pre-orders, uh, a little bit, but how did the sales and traffic go during the, like what, during the watch party for you? So we saw definitely our biggest kick, um, from the East coast because, you know, they air earlier than the West coast. So we had a big influx in the, obviously the DMV area where the Pentagon is and all those cluster of bases were. So we saw about a 2000% uh, percent increase in sit and traffic for our website. Um, I'd say we pretty much like tripled our sales um, throughout this, uh, for, throughout the month. It was almost like a wave happened. It wasn't like that first night, it definitely hit, but then it was like, kind of like was a wave for the rest of, the last couple of weeks. Um, we did see about 5,000 new followers on Instagram. So that's exciting. Um, and then an influx on TikTok and my personal brand, which is also great. So that was, thank you everybody for the support. Seriously. No, that, that is, uh, that is awesome. And, and that, I mean, that goes along with what I've seen, right. Um, over the last couple of years is the East coast really watches shark tank when it airs. They do. The they West do. coast, not so much. Like it, it's, it's, it's like, this is the East coast. And then it, it comes down and then there's like maybe half to like two, th- maybe a third to two thirds, uh, of that traffic. But, but Saturday morning is when the traffic starts coming, like, like morning, morning, not like 
you know, midnight, one o'clock AM at like 8 AM, 10 AM, 11 AM, like all of a sudden more traffic starts coming in from the West coast as if the people in the West coast still use like TiVo or something, or re- we're watching, you know, the re through Hulu or something like that. It's not Hulu. live for them. Yeah. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. We saw a big influx in that too. And then you'll see it on Facebook and you, then people are watching your app, your show on YouTube. So then they're kind of checking us out then. So again, thanks Joe for, for doing our your feedback on us, so I was like, "Cause oh. you haven't been around," and I was like, "Oh my gosh, we get we get to do it." <laughs> <laughs> the, how, how, I mean, when, when did you get to find out about my video being live? Well, when you sent it to me, you sent it to my team on Instagram. Well, because you were like, following me on Twitter. Yeah, of course. Uh, I was doing the video, and I'm like, "Oh, well, wait, that's weird." <laughs> I don't go on <laughs> Twitter as much. I don't go on Twitter a whole heck of a lot. I can see that. And I was stalking you and every way that I could. And I found you on Twitter and I was like, okay, he's not that active, but I'm still going to follow him. <laughs> oh, I know. I, well, I've been trying to make it so like I, they're set up. So like when I post on one, it's supposed to go to the other. Cause I, I just don't use, I just don't use Twitter. Like I, yeah. I, you know, I probably should more. I need to, I have a lot of things I need. I'm supposed to need to be doing, including <laughs> more shorts and more videos. I got to shoot more videos. That's the, <laughs> that's the big thing. I have a, I have a video I need to shoot. I had to get um a friend of mine. I have a, I have a maybe editor, which could help a lot with some other content I want to do. That's outside. This is our tank bubble. Um, cool. And it's a, a reaction video to a uh, very angry customer that we had at the shop. Um, who ultimately it was kind of her fault that she didn't do what she was supposed to do and the results. But, um, but I, I wanted to, I want to bring like how I brought, like, cause I ended up having to take the phone call um, after like the anger came out and she was, she was, I mean, she was cursing out my employees. So uh, not, not great. So, In there. It, so I wanted to, to like reflect on that call. Right. And, and show people like, cause originally I was like, I don't, I don't like gloating. I don't like, I used to post a lot more on social media, but I feel like in the last few years, I I, I just don't, I don't know. I, I don't, it, it, there's a, it's a two, it's twofold thing, right? One is I have kids, so I don't want to post. If I'm not home, um, I'm not posting something that like, I'm, oh, I'm away. Like I didn't post. I was at the Cowboy stadium, right? Like I totally could have, but oh God, that it. means I'm posting that I'm not home mm, and my safety. family is so not yeah. cool. Um, yeah, smart. So that's, that's right. Smart. Like th- these are things that, like eight years ago, I wouldn't wouldn't have cared. It would have been like, oh, let's just do it, right? right. Um, you know, you're so, a dad now. You're protecting your family. It's yeah, bigger try, than that now. Trying yeah. to like that's yeah. I don't know. It's just it's the little things, right? So so I just and yeah. I used to feel like um uh was bragging is the I guess is the word I'm thinking of or flexing, right? As the as the kids would say. <laughs> um, I don't I don't want to yeah. I don't know I don't want to feel like that like. Yes. As long as it's coming from, again, an authentic place, I think people can feel when you're trying to glow and when you're just trying to share information that will help others. I think we all are pretty smart to the Instagram and social media game now. We're like, all right, bro, don't post that because you're just trying to look good. But, you know, (sighs) people can tell when it's genuine. Try, I try not to. I, I, I don't know. I got it. You know, it's like a muscle, right? It's just like shooting videos. It's a muscle that like you, you got to build up to just doing it without thinking about it. Right. It doesn't, it hasn't right. been like, yeah. So I don't know. It's yeah. something I, I gotta, but I'm looking forward to, to if I have an editor, I, I won't be shying away from doing videos as much that aren't like real and real time. Like the, you know, like this or yeah. um the shark tank videos, because when I shoot it in my mind, I'm like, man, how many, how many hours am I going to sit there and like, edit this and make it look good and stuff like that. And it's just like, ah, I don't have time to do that. I probably yeah. have time to do these videos. Like, <laughs> like it's, yeah. So I know, uh, I know it's tough. It's it's tough. You're doing great, Joe. Okay. Oh, no, that, You're doing great. <laughs> thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. You're welcome. Um, You're growing, uh, growing up. What was your childhood dream? Ooh, I think I would say I wanted to be a veterinarian. I loved animals. And then when I turned 12 and had the opportunity to shadow a veterinarian and she took me in to go see my cat get spayed, my cat, I watched the surgery and I said, I don't think I want to do this anymore. (laughs) 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 So I shifted. And I'll tell you, Joe, you know, I have been almost like everything is kind of coming to me. I haven't, I'm not like a long-term, I mean, now that I'm a business owner, I am, but 
even when college came around, I wasn't like, I want to go to Penn State my entire life. It was just like, oh, okay, this opportunity is here. I'm going to go to Penn State. And then even for the military, it was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll go to the military for the business. Oh, okay, it came up. I'm going to try it. So um, yeah, I haven't been a really big visionary other than knowing I wanted to be a veterinarian, but change my mind. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, it, one of the powerful things you can do is figure out what you don't want to do, right? Um, and, yes. and, and, is, and, and being a veterinarian would be great, right? You're helping animals, you're helping people with their animals. Uh, yes. but you know, if you ain't got the stomach for it, then, uh, doesn't no. matter how much money you can make, just like being mm -hmm. a doctor or any, anything, right. If it's not in your DNA to like be able to stomach doing the thing that needs to be done, then it's probably not for you. It's not for you, but it's cool. Cause now looking back, I'm like, I think I was always meant to be an entrepreneur. I've definitely uh, been a little bit of a lone wolf. I've never been the type of kid that's like, if all my friends are doing it, I want to do it. I've never been that type of person. I've been like, I'm going to read my book and, you know, hang out with my family and do school projects. I was very much of a nerd. And then college came around and um, I just enjoyed cheer and, and being, you know, captain of my cheerleading team. So um, it really, yeah, I think entrepreneurship is actually in my blood, but I just never was exposed to it. And so that's one of the reasons why um, I'm a huge advocate for kids now learning more about entrepreneurship and just the basic skills and just being exposed to it. So I hope that I can be like a role model to young girls and be like, you don't have to be a nurse or go in the military or you can do those things, but you can also do other things. You can be, you can build your own business and there's just so much confidence building and self-awareness that comes from it. So I feel like a different person. Uh, you know, I, I, would say, I mean, I, I don't know if the term is dated or whatever, but uh, late bloomer, it sounds like, cause like to go from like book nerd to um, cheer, cheer, like, come on now. That's not, <laughs> that is a pretty big jump. I mean, it's like one thing to be like, Hey, I had no friends or like I had the one friend and now all of a sudden I'm a social butterfly and I'm, you know, I got 20, 30, 50, a hundred okay. friends. You're right. I've never performing been... in front of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. <laughs> I've never been big shy. Difference. I've never been shy and I've never not had friends. I just choose to be more like, uh, I enjoy my alone time and I enjoy like, um, learning and I'm, I'm, I've always been very much of an introspective person. So it's like, I've always had friends, but I just have like, it, that doesn't fuel me as much as like learning and reading and, and um, creating. Mm. So would you say you're an introvert or an extrovert or the, 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 what's the thing, the introvert that's, I forget what the term is. Like but, omni, omnivert or something probably. Yeah. But there's, but there's a term where like you're an, in, you're an introvert that is, um, I, I don't like, I'm not giving it justice, but it's like, you're not afraid to be extroverted, but like, you definitely have to recharge your batteries. Like I'm going to go do this thing with the front, like speak on a stage. But then yeah. after that, like I, I need the downtime because I need to recharge my, my batteries. Like, for real. Yes. Like I can't just be like, Oh, I got off the stage and now we're going to go party or we're going to go do this. And then we're going to wake up in the morning. We're going to go do the other thing. And like, if there's no like downtime other than just sleeping, that is ridiculous, Joe. I don't know who can do that. They are on something. I mean, probably aren't, aren't most people. <laughs> I mean, that's, I think that's the actual reality of it is that and we all want to believe that that's not, that doesn't need to be the case, but I think the, the harsh it, reality is, is people are right. And so for me, I am definitely the one who I will come. I think it's so important to fill your cup before you go out there and try to enrich other people's lives. So I'm a big proponent of self-care days. I'm going to hitting the spa at least once a month, getting my hair and nails done, taking care of Haley and having my own time so I can show up a hundred percent for others when the time is right. And you know, speaking speaking of hair, how long is your hair? Because um, I, I even said that to my wife. I was like, I wish I had hair. I mean, is it is it because it Joe. looked like it was so long that like if you unbraided it, I'm like, how like this is almost to the floor. Joe, come on! I it's have no concept not of all, hair. Come on now. Uh, okay, okay. It's <laughs> so, not it's not all me, honey. It's not all me. This uh, is extensions, okay. and the okay. braid was an extension. Yes, my hair is about like shoulder width. Shoulder length, shoulder length, shoulder length. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, it yes. still looks amazing. Um, <laughs> it's the look. I had to go, you know, big or go home. It's like the dr the drama, the drama. 
you know. <laughs> I'm a cheerleader. I'm a cheerleader. I'm a performer, you know, like gotta go big or go home. I, well, I, absolutely, absolutely. I yeah, I don't know. Maybe I need extensions. You never seen a braid like that in your life on Shark Tank. You never did. No, no I have not. I have not. It was what it was fabulous. Um <laughs> Thank you. Speaking of fabulous, what does the future of Torch look like? Mm. Torch is going to first and foremost put our stakes down at the cadet level, kind of like Barstool did, you know, becoming like that college brand. I really want us to ground ourselves in the beginning of their military career. So we're going to be doing a lot of cool pop-up shops at West Point, the Air Force Academy, Coast Guard Academy, ROTC schools, bigger, um, you know, Texas A&M. We're going to really hit that hard. Um, and I see us really, again, taking if a woman is about to go into the military, it's like, I just go to torch for everything uniform related. And um, I want to stay boutique. I want to also stay, um, I want to go global fast as well. We have ambassadors from, you know, the Australian Navy, the German Army, Canadian Air Force, um, all over. And I would love to expand um, internationally and really have, again, our stakes in that beginner phase of their military career. So we have them for life. That well, that sounds extremely ambitious and awesome that you have ambassadors already in those, uh, in those, yes. in, in those borders. Um, I guess my question is, do you how how are you hitting all of those pop up shops? Is it you, or do you already have people that are at those? I mean, I guess you already have that because of the watch parties and stuff. That yes. You, you hosted. Yes, I have a team, so I call them my torch team. And we do trainings on how to hold pop-up shops at their bases and at their universities. And we send them product and we train them up on how, you know, to be a great brand ambassador. But I love to be boots on the ground. That's my favorite thing to do. And um, I try to go to as many conferences as, as I possibly can. And I want to make our pop-up shops more and more elaborate. So it's like, oh my gosh, I got to go hit up that torch, pop, you know, pop-up shop this year. So we've also done um, a women's retreat, a military women's retreat. We did one in... Hawaii last year and that was really special so I think the in-person bringing people back together again is something that we're going to lean into as well oh that is that is awesome and it's good to hear that you're not having to run around to all the different to do all the different problem shots yourself no <laughs> that is I mean that that I there's wish. a lot to be said for that right though that that, that you have a, a brand that's powerful enough for people to want to be invested in to work you know do the work for you um and yes. with you right it, that's with I, I, it's something I'm reminded every day that like everybody's coming to work and they all got part, you know, part of fleet solutions on their, on the clothes that they're wearing. And I'm just like, it's, cr you it's, did that. it's crazy to me. Well, I mean, it was my dad, you know, my dad, me, uh, my grandfather, my great grandfather, oh. my great uncle, like, it, wow. you know, it's, it's generations, but you know, yeah. it's crazy. Like to me, like it's, it's just, it's still just crazy. And, and I think it's something you should never um, take for granted. And it's something that you should never like, um, overlook or downplay like it's sometimes it's easy to forget right like you you see yeah. it every day become numb to it you don't really think about it but just you know it's a it's a constant reminder it's like staring you in the face i mean we had a customer today um i was like mm -hmm. I, I thought i had seen him before um a few times i i actually i know his truck because his truck is very very unique um <laughs> and because he lives in it and it's it's a giant i mean the truck is huge extended with a big white box that he lives in as his house mm -hmm. And uh, you cool. know, and one of the things he wanted was a was a part of Fleet Solutions T-shirt. So we're like, yeah, like come on, you're here all the time. Like, let's go get oh, you one. So like, that's awesome. It is awesome. Like, it it, it, it means the world to um to me. So uh, special. I, you're making an awesome impact on people's like a positive impact. And you know, there's so much craziness going on in the world. Those little things matter. They really no. do. Uh, abs absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I see. Sorry, I'm going to say no, go I'm going to interject ahead. here. I really do see Torch as, you know, that almost transition space for even when women are about to transition out of the military to be able to step into a different career field that's more creative, but also serving military women. I think once you're in the military, you always have this core value of service and I don't know if I saw a lot of career paths after the military that really fed into my love for fashion and femininity and um, creating. I think, you know, when you are about to go, or when you're about to transition, 
you'll have, you know, bigger companies like Amazon or, um, you know, Home Depot or FedEx, like they'll, they'll come and speak to us. But a lot of those are more techie and, you know, um, you, it's not really very female. There's still a lot of men in those careers and that's totally fine. But I see Torch as an avenue for military women to say, oh, I'm about to transition out or I'm about to separate. I'd love to go work for Torch and they know who we are, what we stand for. And we're very veteran based. Like, I feel like I, I can always trust a veteran who I'm working with. Of course, I love my civilians too. And you need that different perspective, but um, heavy on the veteran side, I think it's important to have that avenue. Yeah. I mean, from a, from a, uh, yeah. The, I mean, the last thing you'd want is to not have many veterans and then get called out for that. Like, Hey, you know, you're selling to veterans, but like <laughs> you're hiring all civilians. Uh, what, what's going on here? Right. Um, right. that, that, you know, that's a trap that could, you could easily fall into if you're not thinking about it as sure. you're going through that process of building the team. And yeah, I mean, certain key people might be, um, not veterans that, you know, at least early stages when you only have so much money to put towards a certain position <laughs> and there's uh, certain opportunities and certain people around like that, that just right. this is who was available. Right. So, right. um, but I think it's, I think it is important that you keep that in mind as you, you go through the process to, to, to be able to help keep that, that roots and be able to remind people like, Hey, like this is, yeah. we're not just talking about it. We're actually doing it. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. You know how it is business, you know, it's all a <laughs> <laughs> it's business. It's a, it's a strategic game we're playing, and uh, we're here for the long run. Absolutely. So, how can people get their torch warrior wear? Y'all, come on over to torchwarriorwear.com and check us out. Yes, pull it up. This is us. Yes, yes. Listen to our podcast. I saw you ring the ding on that one. It's yeah. a fun one. Yeah. We got. We got to get you to speak at uh, Indie PodCon in uh in september if you want to come to fill like the philly area of course i mean you come visit some family and stuff while you're while Look, you're over here send me the dates send me the info joe i will i'm gonna send you that video i'm gonna send you the dates uh and <laughs> i'm sending all of you over to uh torchwarriorwear.com to uh yes. to go and get your torch wear woo 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 Haley, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. You're welcome back anytime uh, when you have some updates and things like that. Hopefully, we can get you out here in, in Philly uh, in yeah. September. So, uh, awesome. see, it would be it would be absolutely awesome. Pleasure to have you, and uh, again, welcome back anytime. Joe, thank you, thank you for what you do for the Shark Tank community and um, for just celebrating entrepreneurs. So you're awesome, and we love you. So thank you. Thank you so much, Haley. Uh, and and you are awesome for making it all the way to the end. Uh, if you haven't watched Haley's Super Haley's pitch, click on up here. If you have, I'll see you in the video down below. Take care. Now go be super. Oh, uh, look, you got fire. Did I get fireworks? No, oh, I'm not special enough. <laughs>